set foot on foreign fields. Or take the low road to discovery. Find comfort in strangers. Seek the bright lights of the city. Let your mind wander an extraordinary path. You never know what's around the corner. Can you believe it? September on Sky. Let the journey begin. can be protected no longer. Britain's sickest young minds are on the loose. He's impossible, Scuds. He's a laugh, Bigfoot. He's a tough one, JJ. He's all mouth, Adzi. And he's cooler than cool, Flip. An abandoned Riverside Wharf taken over by the Little Monsters. From their den in an old warehouse, they plot twisted games for five adult victims. One by one, the adults are eliminated. Until just one survives, with a chance to win a thousand pounds. But not if the monsters can help it. Any adult who dares challenge them must be brave or stupid. And either way, they're stupid. So the monsters have been using mail order, well, ordering more males anyway, five unsuspecting adults who are quite happy to subject themselves to humiliation, mental and physical abuse. They'll learn. Surname, age. Newberry, 37, rugby captain. If you're a rugby captain, why don't you just tackle yourself? OK. <laughs> oh, come on, you go! Between matches, Paul Newberry works as a truck driver. Getting into mind of children is difficult, but hopefully we can do it. Phillips, 34, security guard. You're security guardy. Look after this for me. Stuart Phillips is entrusted with a jar of poo. Why? I just want to walk away with this with um, some of my dignity intact. Oldfield, 30, and I'm not scared of anybody. Take your hands up. No, I'm not. Come on. I'm not, not touching Come that. On. But Adsy's found out insurance salesman Barry Oldfield is scared of creepy crawlies and shows off his pet collection. I'm not a quitter. I always give 100%, uh, and I don't like coming last place. Thompson, 27, part-time actor. Well, if you're a part-time actor... Stop laughing, act Oldfield! ..that you're falling in love with him and you ask him to marry you. Jim Thompson has a serious career as a credit controller. Well, he did. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Will you marry me? That was rubbish! That was a oh, disgrace! That was the things that are going to help me get through this is uh, my stubbornness and my sheer determination that I'll just keep on going until I, until I drop, really. Barrett, 40, telecoms engineer. Ian Barrett is into extreme sport and has two children himself. I would be happy if I survive the whole challenge, make it to the end, hopefully come out a winner. Shut up! The adults are taken to be locked in a cage on the edge of the monster's riverside wharf, let out only to compete in games or be punished. Lucky them. The numbers on their backs are their ages. I hope no one's sensitive. The monsters prepare their first game. They've been busy with their best junk, building chariots to be powered by human horses. So is this going to be your start and finish line? This, this is going to be our start and finish, and we're going to go up there, round, and then we come back through here, past there, finish. This is literally going to kill them? Yep. This is the course. Each chariot will have a monster in the driving seat. 
but the adult who gets four and a half stone scuds will have a huge advantage over the one who gets 13 stone Bigfoot. It's a very nervous moment. Scuds, here we go. Barrett. I don't even think I'm going to get to the finish line. <laughs> JJ. Oldfield. Yes. <laughs> what do you think about Oldfield? I think he's a fat Dumbo. That's Thompson. Right. <laughs> we got Phillips. Phillips. I am so unhappy I've got Phillips. Okay. So last but definitely not least. All right, we got Newbury. Oh, thanks. <laughs> At least as a truck driver, Newbury has experience with heavy loads. Just in case it isn't hard enough, the adults have to do the race on their hands and knees, and each monster will try to slow the other monster's adults down by pelting them with rotten fruit and veg. On your marks, get set, go! They're off. It's an explosive start. Into the first bend, and security guard Phillips takes an early lead. Part-time actor Thompson, in green, tries to pass Phillips on the inside there, causing a nasty pile-up. Now he breaks away from the pack, textbook. <laughs> Meanwhile, bringing up the rear, Newbury overtakes insurance salesman Oldfield. Thompson and Adzi are streaking well ahead now. Newbury, in blue, breaks away, leaving Phillips and Barrett to battle it out. Oldfield is out of power. Newbury secures second, pulling 13 stone Bigfoot. Thompson scoots over the finish line first with Adzi. That's me done. While Newbury and Bigfoot finish runners-up, the battle for third and fourth rages on. Hang on, Barrett pulling scuds is standing up. Surely that won't go unnoticed. I took a good fruiting, I did. <laughs> is that all fruit? That's fruit, tomatoes, peaches. And a bit of sweat. A bit of sweat. I was all right <laughs> in the first corner. Thought I'd do a Schumacher move and block the rest of the players out. Oh, you were actually thinking? Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had it all planned, <laughs> had it all planned. But I got caught up with the tyres and somehow I managed to just break away from the rest and I was off. The positions are decided. Now the monsters set the scores. First adult, Thompson, gets the winner's ten. The last, Oldfield, gets a big zero. In between, the monsters award Newbury eight, Phillips six and Barrett five. Go, go, go. Yeah. But there's unfinished business. The monsters gather in their den for a council of war. I don't like Barrett at all. I mean, in the chariot race, I had Phillips, and it was just neck and neck, and like Phillips was just leading, and Barrett just stood up and just ran with it. And whatever you say, Scott, he cheated. I know, I'd, I'd admit that. And he, he did cheated, that. and I don't like him at all. He cheated, yeah. He's a pain in the butt. Say aye if you think. Barrett is the most annoying one out of them all. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Telecom's engineer Barrett is in for a punishment. The monsters think he's an old woman, so he has to dress as one. And because his name rhymes with carrots, he has to bite some. Well, it's as good a reason as any. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now, nice. No, I uh, can't touch him. No. Hands around your back, then old granny. Go back. 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 But it's not just Barrett. The monsters can punish anyone for any reason at any time. Oldfield's crime? Well, we think you smile too much. You're always Mr. This, Mr. That. You, you think you're the best. Yeah. And you think you're the big tough guy, don't you? Flip hands Oldfield a cloth soaked in sloppy brown sauce to wipe the smile off his face. Now wipe that 
on your face and hurry up. Now, hurry up! Put the cloth in there. Come on, go, Dave. Wipe that smile off your face! Suddenly, JJ gets all generous. I'm going to give you, for doing this, I thought you would have backed out. But for doing this, we're and you're still you doing points. it now, we're going to give you two points. You should get nothing. Can I have three points? Let us pour it over your head and we'll give you three Can points. Can we do it? Do it. Flip doesn't have to be told twice. <laughs> you got three points. Got to sound yourself three points. So Oldfield's still last, but at least he now has some points. The monsters will make someone walk the plank into the river after the next game. With the points like this, it could be anyone. The monsters head to try their latest contraption. Brilliant in its simplicity, the whack-a-meter. The more the needles pulled round, the harder it whacks the adults' backsides. Here! Next one! Here! After being whacked, the contestants have got to hold straight faces for three seconds to make sure they're not complete jesses. If you flinch, if you move anything, you're out. They are taking no prisoners at all. Move. Up first, Newbury. Adzi sets the whack meter This is level whack. Go. One. No problems there. Remember, Newbury's a truck driver. He spends a fair amount of time in his backside. Oldfield, Garfield, fire! Two, one, two, three, no! Oldfield takes it like a man. I hope you cry this time. Barrett. Now this should be interesting. The monsters have it in for Barrett, the chariot race cheat. And go. Snap. Oh, he won. Went up a bit. Two, three, out. You went up a bit. He flinched. Barrett, you're out. So you're out. You're out first round. What a wimp. It was the tiniest of moves, but it's enough to knock Barrett out. And on the first round. Let's go, go! Come on, you ready to cry? And slap. One. I bet that. Two. He's going to cry. Three. Out. No such shameful display from Phillips. Big foot. Go. And Thompson's through as well. Two. Three. On to the next round. The machine is set for eek. Newbury's going great guns. Oldfield, let's contest them, please. Come on, Smelly. Don't have to... Go! Bang! Oh, Oldfield holds a steely gaze. Three! Out! Oh, Come on, Smelly. Come on, Smelly. Run! Love it. One, two, three! Out! Yeah. A definite flinch from Phillips there. He's next out. The same goes for Thompson. Just two are left as the Wackameter cranks up another level to ah. Newbury goes first. He must have granite pants. Can Oldfield match that? He's One, desperately trying not two, to show the pain. Three. Oh. Made it. Just. <laughs> the monsters have ties in both the R and Eek rounds to sort out. They give both Newbury and Oldfield the full winner's ten points. Phillips and Thompson get six each. As loser, Barrett gets zero. He's got the lowest overall score. What better choice for first to walk the plank? It's been a short and not very sweet spell on Monster Wharf for Barrett. You really don't like them, do you? No, not a lot. Go on, tell me why. Uh, they've got no discipline. Mm -hmm. They have no leader. They've mm. got no morals. <laughs> no scruples. <laughs> The monsters give Barrett a good send-off. Oh 
After the break, the monsters have a real treat lined up. Oh, my. All their fans, they're nasty. And why did the adult climb the ladder? To lick a slug. Just say you're kissing your girlfriend and you want to give her a big lick. I think six months in Boston will sort them out. I found it very difficult to sit down last night. Uh, you want to see very, the, you want yeah, to see the bad news, wasn't it? <laughs> Just so sure. You want to see the bruises? Back in their cage on the monster's riverside wharf, the adults are showing off their battle scars with pride. Four survived the whack-a-meter. <laughs> Truck driver and rugby captain Newbury. Insurance salesman Oldfield. Security guard Phillips. And part-time actor Thompson. One didn't. Barrett had to walk the plank. Kind of the nature of the game. It's got to be whittled down to one winner, so, you know, one less person they need to worry about. To win the £1,000 prize, the remaining adults will have to compete in more games. The monsters are already hard at work. You're 20, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So. All right, lads, I can see eggs. That looks like trouble. What are you doing? It's for the radio ball egg light. OK, what ball? That, that ball! ball. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! The monsters have brought in a high-tech booking bronco and they've got lots of eggs. Bigfoot explains. They have 15 eggs over their body. Mm. <clears throat> they have to sit on the ball for, for a minute and every time they fall off, we stop the stopwatch so they get back on. And however many eggs they have left, the person with the most eggs wins the game. I say it's quite evil. <laughs> They're going to get filthy, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Go! Phillips goes first. He's got lowest points, so needs to do well. <laughs> Nice, gentle fall there. <laughs> Time's up. How many eggs are left intact? No, one, one, two, three, four, 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 four um, five, six... No, that wasn't cracked, man. Seven. Seven? seven? What a disgrace! <laughs> Yeehaw! So, can Oldfield beat seven unbroken eggs? Oldfield has eight unbroken eggs, one more than Phillips. Yeah, you're just as as <laughs> Thompson has to beat that. What's that? Look how slow that is! He's holding his own. The other way, that is his I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. And it burned, burned, burned. <laughs> But he doesn't hold his hat. And he's straight over the horns. You're like a cowgirl! The monsters aren't impressed. You're like a cowgirl! You're a disgrace! You're not even a cowboy! Thompson's got egg on his face. He saved just four. Newbury's leading on points. Will he keep his lead? He's off straight away. And off again. And again. And again. And once more. Oh, you are such Can a disgrace. You, <laughs> <laughs> you can't go. Two. 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 Just two eggs Ten. saved from a possible 15. And the fewer eggs, the fewer points. The monsters set the scores. But what I'm thinking is the first place goes to Oldfield, which is 10 points. So in first place, Oldfield with 10 points. Then Phillips, he's got six. Then Thompson has four points and nothing for Newbury. Which has taken Newbury from top to joint bottom alongside Phillips. 
There's a plank walk after the next game. Who will it be? JJ and Scuds have decided Newbury needs a punishment, just for fun. He likes to think he's cool. They'll show him freezing. Come on, Mr. Cool. We're going to really cool you off now. Think as cool as a cucumber? We're going to cool... The monsters have thoughtfully prepared a nice ice bath when Newbury can juggle cucumbers. Cheers, lads. We must really be chilled off now. Yeah, Mr. Cool. Newbury hasn't got long to dry off before JJ unlocks the cage for the next challenge. Day! Grown-ups are so dumb. Just because they can ground us, they think they're the best. They always want to boss us around. And it annoys me and it probably annoys every kid. Time for revenge. Oh, my God. Scuds has come up with this one. God, it stinks, huh? But it will do. Monsters hate shopping. So they're arranging a very special sale. The bargains are all buried in a mound of stinking manure, and the adults have to smell out those bargains. It's important that you know that someone's leaving at the end of this round. New, but you're losing. Oh, I was, I was winning. But you, you didn't do too well on the last one. So um, I don't want to keep you talking too long because I'm really looking forward to seeing you in there. So um, good luck. <laughs> The adult who grabs the most sale bargains wins. When the moon shines on the cow shed and we're rolling in the... Phillips is joint lowest scorer with Newbury. This doesn't look like his game. Dive in it, Phillips. What have you got to lose? <laughs> what are you going, you piece of marmalade? I've got one each and, and Newbury's got two. When the breeze blows. Newbury's shopping hard. Now it's getting really frenzied. Nice handbag, Newbury. Oh, and Oldfield's got one to match. The monsters give Philip some encouragement. Phillips, get back to work! You don't have all day! Time's running out. So how much have the bargain hunters managed to grab? A pair of jeans, sock, a shoe. A lovely pearl necklace. Four for Thompson. Next, Oldfield. Shirt, one hat, one <laughs> shoe, one glove, and two ties. Six items for Oldfield. On to Phillips. Go on, then. A pair of glasses and a scarf. You're disgrace. <laughs> Number two, you are an absolute disgrace. Adzi says it like it is. Yes, sir. Quite good. Shirt. Lovely t shirt. Yep. Matching handbag. Yep. Ladies' underwear. Right. Nice jumper. Phillips's pants. Or a shoe. Uh, that is six. Okay, Newbury has um... equaled Oldfield's six items. They both get ten points. Thompson gets six. And as loser, Phillips gets zero. Only one thing can happen now. So that means Phillips, you're going in the river. Boys, can you take them away from me, please? Come with us. Come on. Come on, stop it. Be careful. Anything, come on. It's honestly, it's just one of you. You are very, very lucky. Forgive me if I don't come too close to you, but no, you absolutely blame, yeah. stink. Show me your arm. Thank you. <laughs> I've got it down me wellies in me pants, cos me trousers split. It's everywhere. Old Phil, did you enjoy that? Enjoyment is not a word that I would use. So <laughs> I've never done anything quite like it, and I hope never to do it again. You did Those pretty monsters. well. Uh, yeah, it was not too bad, but the monsters, all their plans, they're nasty. How do you feel that Phillips has gone? Sad. Are you really? Nice man, yeah. You yeah. said with a big smile on no, your face. No, sad. No, seriously, genuinely sad. Nice man. 
Okay. Seriously. But he's gone. Gone and almost forgotten already. But security guard Phillips lost in style. Get out! Get away! Well, I've got a daughter mm. who's the complete opposite of them. Um, I definitely thought no more. I don't want a son, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think six months in Borstal will sort them out. <laughs> that kind of talk can land an adult only one place, in the river. Back in the cage, the smell isn't fading. 36 hours after we played it, yeah. <laughs> You stink. Uh, yeah, you stink. <laughs> he stinks. So we I all know. stink. Mind you, it doesn't help when your trousers are split and it all goes down your leg. No. Meanwhile, the monsters are making more plans. What are we going to do for the next time, JJ? You got any ideas? Well, we got a big ladder attached to a fire engine. How about you put slugs at the top of it and they've got to lick one? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we will know if they've done it, cos we'll have a camera up there. This is how I think we should get the slugs. Like, something coming out and a box stuck on top of it, like this. No, cos we've got three slugs, should we have one at the bottom, one in the middle and one at the top? Yeah. yeah. It's got to be the quickest time, lick the slugs, that's the game. The name of the game, then? The monsters are fixed for this 80-foot fire engine ladder to drop by. Part-time actor Thompson will be the first to climb it. The hardest thing I've ever done was uh, bungee jump, because I've got a fear of heights. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to be expected to do anything along those lines here today. Uh, but no doubt I will, because that's the whole point of the game, as far as I'm aware. OK, Thompson, do you like heights? Not particularly. No. Do you like slugs? Not the greatest fan of them. You like licking slugs? <laughs> Never done it before, but, you know. Well, I think you know the deal. Climb up there, lick as many slugs as you can, yeah, come back yeah. down. And you're in last place at the moment. Got to pull out the bag, yeah? You do, otherwise yeah. you're in the river. It's just very high. It's very high. It's very high. It's I'm going to leave you to I've it. I've got to do it as quick as possible. Get up there. Thank you. On your marks, get set, go! Thompson's off. Not looking down. He licks the first slug. Mmm, there are two more. Yes. So crazy right now. Most incredibly. On to slug number two. Come on, faster! Eat it! Just say you're kissing your girlfriend if you want to give her a big lick. Don't you just love him? Thompson is undeterred. One minute thirty. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, come on! He's got all three yeah. slugs in one minute, thirty seconds but it's the time back to the bottom that ultimately counts. He won't find that out till the others have gone. Finish. Absolutely brilliant. Next, it's rugby captain Newbury. All right, so Newbury, you're in second place, but there's not much separating you <clears throat> and last place. I know. You could be heights. Not really, no. That bodes well, then. Newbury licks his first slug. Keep moving! Now! Fast stop! Fast stop! Fast stop! Fast stop! Fast stop! Fast stop! He doesn't seem to mind these. And it's supposed to taste nice! Come on, please! Finish! Now! At the final slug, Newbury's just a second ahead of Thompson. As he reaches the bottom of the ladder, he's exhausted. But has he beaten Thompson on overall timing? Get a good lick on those slugs. Oh. They're beautiful. Oh. Can I go and get some more? You practically ran down there. I had to. I was knew what right? I had to do, and I had to do it. Did you enjoy it? Yes, thank you. Good, I'm glad. I'll nice. let you get your breath back. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Last on the ladder, insurance salesman Oldfield. Can he hang on to his lead? Slug. Second 
and slug. As he approaches the third slug, Oldfield is behind the others on time. He gives it a specially good lick to make up. And races back down the ladder. But has he done it quickly enough? <laughs> oh. oh, well done. You practically ran the whole way. Had to be very focused and... Mm -hmm. What were you thinking on your way up? I can do it. I had to stay focused and not think about. Didn't see any sights. Step by step. What about the slugs? No problem. Like them? That was yeah, that was fine. Yeah, they're lovely. But just the climb. Okay, thank you very much. Well done, Mister. Cheers. Now the monsters will reveal their timings. In first place, Oldfield with two minutes twenty-one seconds. In second place, Newbury with two minutes thirty-two seconds. Which means Thompson. Going in the river. Come on, Clemos. We didn't want to do this, but you have to go. JJ must like Thompson, or he's getting soft in his old age. Since this. Will you marry me? That was rubbish! That was Thompson has come a long way in the monster's eyes. That was rubbish! That's me, John. You did really well in that last round. Well, obviously, I didn't because I came last. Oh, no, but I know that you were really scared of heights. I was just kind of doing what I do and making sure I didn't fall off. But time for Thompson to fall off now. The plank. Coming next, the decider. A blindfold walk through a mousetrap minefield. I thought you were meant to be able to flip. Foot. Never trust a monster. And only one adult can enter the nightmare playground with the chance to win a thousand pounds. Yeah, you've got it, you've got it! I think Newbury and Oldfield are evenly matched. Because they both they both drew on the first one. They both got big muscles. I don't really know because I, I I kinda don't like both of them. In their den, the little monsters, Adzi. JJ, Bigfoot, Scuds and Flip discuss their last two contestants. Three others have already fallen victim to the monster's twisted games and walked the plank. One more must go the same way. Only the last survivor will have a chance to win the £1,000 prize. Truck driving, rugby captain Newbury and insurance salesman Oldfield wait in their cage. Do you think Oldfield's got what it takes to beat you? No. Nobody's got what it takes to eat me. OK, why? Well, the compet competitive nature of mine is just started coming through now. OK, what about Newbury? Do you think he can win? He could do, but he's not going to. Uh, uh, I think he's shown too many weaknesses, and I think not only myself, but I think the little monsters have tapped onto that. Never a truer word spoken. The monsters are planning their next game. Oh, guys, 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 look what I got. Oh, Mouse traps. Yeah. I've got mouse traps. Well, one eight or two ain't gonna do no good. No, but 200 are. Take the trainers and socks off. Yeah, trainers and, and make it sort of like um, sort of like a track sort of yeah. thing, not just a straight line, sort of like yeah. a curve. So whatever it is, bring it on. We're ready for it. The adults are blindfolded and barefoot. They must make their way through the mousetrap maze. It's a straight playoff. Whoever sets off the fewest traps is through to the final. It is going to be quite painful, so if you'd like to make your way over here. The only help? Directions from a monster. On your mark. If you can trust them. Get set. Go. OK, put your right forward. Lift it in the air. Oldfield goes first with and Adzi. Put it down now. Put it down now? Yes. So I try to visualise the course. And when I put my foot down initially, first of all, it's trying to get balance, trying to start off getting balance, lifting upright. I was thinking, right, OK, I've got to be so, so careful. I'm very close left to one, foot, aren't I? Yeah. Left foot, lift up. No, no. Mm. Uh, I knew that if I got caught, it would be excruciating, and I'd, I'd probably lose balance on the other foot, and it'd all go bandy. Over. 
and you put your toe down. Down? Just yes. there, yeah? Yep. Now my right, right foot. foot over there's a line there. Now you can put it down now. Whoops. <sighs> right, your other foot. Yep. Move slightly forward. forward. Whoops again. That's it. I was thinking, right, I haven't got a clue where the boundaries are, where, how close I am to the edge. I'd lost focus on the map in which the course was going. Oh! You've got a duck now. Your left foot, mm -hmm. lift it up into the air, and don't pull it down. Right, move it slightly forward, over, over, over. No! You bad brain! Right, move it over. Adsy's getting exasperated. Ah! Okay, turn your heel a bit more. To you? Yeah. Down. Lovely. Oh. Ah! Oh! Right, you have to do it yourself now. Great timing, Adsy. Oldfield hits a trap straight away. Then another. Down? Down. Right, now your other foot. Well done. Congratulations. Finally, he crosses the finish line. That, that was a tough challenge. That was a real tough challenge. Um, I really don't know how well I did. I haven't got a clue. On your marks, get set, go. Right foot forward. The tension increases as Newbury sets off, guided by Flip. Right foot over. Oof. No, back, 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 back a bit. Not no. the best start. No. Oh, you lucky. Over. Yeah, can you? No, left a bit. Right a bit. No, you're not allowed to snap them off. Flip said, I'll try and help you as much as I can. Little did I know, he was a monster. Left a bit. You'd back. think he would have learnt by now. Down. I thought you was meant left to be helping me, Flip. Foot. Do you want some help? Yes, please. Or shut it. Left foot up. You'd almost believe him, wouldn't you? No, wait. Now, right foot over. I thought you meant to be helping me, Flip. What I am? Wait. Now, put it down. Oh, you... No, no, right, 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 right. Back, back. Put your right foot back. Oh. As soon as I put my foot down, bang. Put my other leg over. Yes, you can put it. Bang. I said don't put it down. <laughs> no, no, no. No, wait. You shuffle your left foot left. Now, duck. More, more, more. Okay, shuffle forward. It was the last bit to hurt as well because you, you knew you was near, nearly there. So your, your emotions suddenly change. You think, oh, I'm nearly finished. And then all of a sudden, bang, bang, bang. And you're like three or four at the same time. And you're like, oh, oh, oh. Okay, put it down, straight, all completely. I'll bring your right foot over. Ah, oh, that one's going to hurt in the morning. Down. So near and yet so far. You're fine, you're fine. Complete. Well done. I'm extremely tired, I'm extremely bruised. And to not get to the end, if I don't, I mean, we'll wait and see, but if I don't, I will be very, very annoyed with myself. Right, lads, you have no idea how close it was. One trap. Oh, lovely. One trap separated the two of you. That's all you needed. Newbury. Yes, Jane. You managed to set off 34 traps. Right, Jane. Oldfield. You managed to set off 33. Which means, Oldfield, congratulations. You're going through to the final. Oh. Newbury. Unfortunate, you did really, really well, but monsters. Take him away. He's all yours. It's an early bath for Newbury, the all-action rugby captain. Over. Ah, oh, oh, that one's going to hurt in the morning. I came so close and it's all over. How are you feeling? Gutted, honestly. Absolutely gutted. Goodbye. And with that, off he goes.
It ends here. Oldfield enters the nightmare playground. The monsters have put the prize money in 10 bags of 100 pound coins. And to get them, Oldfield must beat the skateboards, seesaws, wobbly bridge, climbing wall, and tightrope. You know the monsters by now. They're not gonna make it easy for you. I very much doubt it. The monsters have a few extra obstacles. First, Bigfoot applies a neck brace. You've got a broken neck. Oldfield balances on the seesaw. If he touches the ground or drops a bag, he loses it. You try for till September, because you better. <laughs> oh, big it. foot, big foot. Ooh, I think he's got it. He's got it. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna fall, he's gonna fall. Come on, fall. Come on. Uh, it's just I never knew pigs could fly, did you? The first bag is hard to unhook. Oldfield tries a jerk. He's off the seesaw and 100 pounds down. Will he reach the next bag? Success. Get in the chair. Take it on. One more. How many more? A spin with flip prepares Oldfield for the skateboard. Come on, Oldfield! He finds it hard to balance. Daisy, Miss one. Right behind you. He's off. He'll have to skip another hundred pound bag. Another board and a good recovery. That's two hundred pounds. But he certainly can't get complacent. <laughs> Oldfield, you're way too old for this. You look uglier than the previous one. Now, Adzi has some goggle eye specs. I know you're going to break your back soon. How am I doing? Rubbish. It's onto the wobbly bridge. Oldfield needs all the help he can get. It's not the next target. Well, you've done well so far. Let's see if we can keep it up. Come on, boys. Give me some encouragement here, you Come monsters. on, Come Oldfield. On. You're doing really well. There's JJ being nice again. Is he on commission? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oldfield gets the courage he needs. Oh, oh, yeah, you've, you've got, got it, you've got it. He's got another bag. He's a plonker, he's a plonker. What's he He's a plonker. Oh, Old habits die hard. The next bag is even higher. Bags are quite high up. And I hear you don't like heights. Yeah! I can't believe you stitched me up like this. I know, but that's what we're here for. Oldfield moves onto the climbing wall. You probably fall now. Faster, 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 faster. Scuds helps to make it nice and slippery. I think he's going to fall. Oldfield slips, losing the bag at the bottom. Come on! There's money, come on! He moves on to the next bag, but falls again. He now has £400, but has missed another 400 Will JJ's flippers on, put him off on the tight rope? Hey, come on! Come on, Oldfield! Come on, Oldfield! Come on, Oldfield! Get the first one, come on! Oldfield leans out to reach the bag and gets it. The last bag. That makes the total £600. How are you feeling? Shattered. How was that for you? Fantastic, but there were some difficult bits. It was very tricky. It did look very tricky, but you've not done too bad. We got about six. Six hundred pounds, right. Now. If this was a kind of normal game show, you'd probably have the chance to double your money. But you're aware of the little monsters by now. They're not going to make it easy for you. They're going to give you the chance to half your money. Oh, that's pleasant. So you could leave here with £300. If you look over here, you see two doors. One blue, one red. One leads to a dead end. 
The other leads to freedom. You can take your money and run. So the monsters are over there. They're going to help you decide. You've got to trust them. Monsters, what do you reckon? Red or blue? You listening? Which ones do you trust? Choice is yours. I don't want you to tell me. I just want you to head off. You've made your decision. Now go for it. Good luck. He's through with all the money and free. From video howlers to hell-raising pranksters, whose bite is definitely worse than their bark. We eat people. I don't know how we can let you go now. More scare tactics after Fear Factor. Were you going somewhere? Welcome to Football Years. In this episode, the 1993-94 season, when reigning champions Manchester United battle it out with new boys Blackburn Rovers for the Premiership. Shearer strikes again, and it's glory for young Lee Sharp. We discover who's crazy enough to upset Fash the Bash. Fash, you know, you're big, you're black, Jonesy, you're a puff guy. And I was thinking, who would write that? And we find out the best way for women to get ahead in football. If you've worked in the world of softball and the world of football, is it going to phase you? Hold tight for one of the most exciting and controversial seasons ever. In 1993, Manchester United had won their first league crown in 26 years. And now they'd found the winning way, manager Alex Ferguson was in no mood to give it up. So, in preparation for the new season, Fergie offered a new five-year, big-money contract to his rising star and the jewel in the crown of his United team. He had style, the media loved him, and the girls adored him. He's gorgeous. <laughs> no, not David Beckham. No, not Ryan Giggs. No, in 1993, the undisputed teen sensation was Lee Sharp. Lee Sharp was the man. Lee Sharp in his prime was awesome. He had that sort of quality about him and that sort of, that sort of sexiness. I think I want to have your baby. Lee Sharp comes through. Young kid must have absolutely been in his element to be at a club like United. He was a good-looking lad. He, he was like the he was like the first Beckham. And just like Beckham, Sharp was at the leading edge of fashion. Oh, perhaps not. This is a nice one. My friend Gary Pollister would like this shirt. That shirt did look um, it did look pretty ugly. With his stunning looks and an obvious flair for fashion, Lee was given the chance to start his own high-class clothing range. They don't generally sell very well, but it's, uh, it's quite a good boost for your ego to have your own line of sportswear. He was a role model to all the young United apprentices. Even the no-hopers. Last time we was away, I think uh, he told me he was going to shave his head because he had his head shaved by one of the other lads. And um, he was saying about shaving mine, but I don't think he'll do it. Hopefully. Don't worry, David, it'll never catch on. And while Bex left the music to his future wife, Lee was the first United player to lead a pop star lifestyle, and they had the musical talent to match. <laughs> he wanted to be the fifth member of Take That. That is official. That is not telling lies. That is exactly what he wanted to be. And we can all see him as just one of those, definitely. And like Take That, he had the pick of the attractive groupies. Got the looks, the legs, the body. I remember walking into a bar and I remember turning around and everybody in that bar was absolutely fixed on him. They are just wanting you to know I think you're the sexiest man on the air. And we love you. Pills, great parties! 
The music will be going on till five o'clock, so if you have as good a time as I'm going to have, we'll do all right. But what came with that, and what the downside for Ferguson, was became a party lifestyle. And on one famous occasion, he put an end to one of Lee's house parties in person. Knocks on the door. So it looked like a full-blown party stroke orgy, and he got hold of me and just sort of said, get everyone out, and sat me and Giggsy down and give us uh, pretty much the roastings of our lives. But it wasn't only off the pitch that Fergie and Sharp didn't see eye to eye. This animosity between Fergie and Lee came to a head about his uh, celebrations. I like to move it, move it. He developed like a goal scoring <laughs> celebration of like a, of a sharpie shuffle. And then his second one that he did was a kind of he did that and then he did that and then he did that. And his third one, because he had the third one as well, was where he just pulled the corner flag towards him and he pretended he was Elvis. The top man. Top man. <laughs> the fans loved it, but one man didn't. Fergie. Could you please demonstrate the famous Sharpie Shuffle for us? <laughs> actually, actually, the manager's banned me from doing it and he's got his spine. <laughs> he's a young man, he's 24 now, so... I would expect him to be more mature. Will you tell Alec Ferguson? <laughs> the fans were hoping to see plenty more Sharpie shuffles when an undefeated Manchester United played Aston Villa in late August. It should be something of a feast this if it's anything like the meetings between these two sides last season. put United in pole position by the end of August, with Premiership newcomers Blackburn Rovers close behind. Let's get ready to rumble! 1993 was the year when two young Newcastle fans were taking their first step in the world of entertainment. While these two were monkeying around in the studio, their future celebrity jungle VIP was marking his territory on the football pitch. Get him out of here! A six foot three with a black belt in karate, John Fash knew it in the name of Fash the Bash. Fash the Bash, he was just a bully, wasn't he? <laughs> That's the tackle we want to see. Proper hard man. Fash certainly was an intimidating figure. While Fash may not have been a favourite on the pitch, the kids loved him and copied his every move. Fash was so popular, he launched his TV career presenting the biggest show on television. He may have been just the presenter, but he still liked people to know how hard he was. Yes, I've been doing martial arts for quite a period of time now. And as you see me here, we've been doing quite a bit on each show. And being the clever chap he is, John even saw an opportunity to combine his love for martial arts with his silky smooth presenting techniques. Mikey, just show us a high kick. Dan, you can just show me a combination punch. Whoa, there's the power. But let's see it again in slow motion. While Fash was being paid to be a hard man on screen, the real money came on the pitch when eccentric Wimbledon chairman Sam Herman made him one of the richest players of the time. His contract at Wimbledon was structured in such a way that he got a bonus 
for pretty much everything he did. I started off about £5,000 a goal. ka -ching! But it aggregated to going up that I could go up to sort of £10,000, £11,000 a goal. ka -ching! It was phenomenal. It doesn't matter how far out he was, he'd have a shot. Wimbledon on the attack, Fashionu with an effort from long range, and it's a fantastic effort, and the goal for Wimbledon from John Fashionu. ka -ching. With his new contract signed and sealed, Fashioner's Wimbledon team faced West Ham in their first away match of the season, and Fash soon got into the swing of things. Fashionu there with a late challenge, and it's upset one or two of the West Ham United players. Free kick. Played in, cleared by McClosco, Heather in, chance, it's a final touch from Sanchez and it's gone in the goal. Wimbledon score, Laurie Sanchez. And Fash was after his first bonus of the season. Good ball in, good first time touch from Fash and he scored for Wimbledon. He looks absolutely delighted. ka -ching. In 1993, the government gave normal people the chance to be almost as rich as John Fashionu when the National Lottery was launched. The first ever National Live Lottery draw. But Black Bear Rover supporters felt like their winning numbers had already come up when local multi-millionaire Jack Walker shamelessly transformed the club into a Premiership challenging side. They just hired a team of mercenaries come from all quarters. They paid money for anybody with more than one leg. And I think when Jack Walker came along and sort of ploughed all that money in, it was just incredible. Jack Walker had gone on the biggest shopping spree in football. And Jack's brand new Blackburn cost a mere 19.5.